Hulk groomed sexy Louise Wenner in action. It's this image that's made her a successful cover girl, bloke icon, and a female role model. But the singer-songwriter doesn't believe in the power of sex appeal, and she thinks it's as bogus as Latism and girl power. If you don't have a hunchback of three eyes, and you're, you know, in the in the in sort of in the media, and you're in a band, then you're going to become some kind of, you know, focus for that sort of attention. I'm the main songwriter of I wrote the song for this album, and yeah, people talk a lot about what you get most of the attention. And that's true of male bands as well. You know, they're, they're frontman, they're singer, their main songwriter will be the person that gets the attention. And uh, in some ways, because I'm a woman in the band, that's supposed to make it different. And I'm not quite sure how, really. Louise and the rest of Sleeper, John Stewart and Andy McClure, have waited a long time to crack the big time. They met up in Manchester four years ago, after years of drifting between various bands and bedsits. We were all on the dole for about three years. We were trudging around doing little club gigs for ages. Everyone was saying, you know, go and get a proper job, go and do something that will give you some kind of future, I think. And uh, obviously my parents were getting more and more worried as the time was going on. Yeah. Uh, it was just something I really wanted to do, and I thought, yeah, I think you have to be a bit mad, a bit obsessed with it, and, and uh, not give up. So. It's been quite quick since we got a record deal, so it all worked, you know, pretty well. She's a good girl. After selling 300,000 records, Sleeper show no signs of slowing down. They've been hiding away in the studios working on a new album, which will include this single. Then they'll hit the road again to find out how it goes down with the fans. We're going to go into in Britain towards the end of October, the end of November. It's great to go back and sort of play with the new stuff we have. I mean, this would just be like a three week tour, which isn't, isn't that long. But when you've been sort of going through America and Japan and Europe for sort of three months back to back, and you, and you know, you've just been smelling everyone's disgusting socks and for, for that long, it, yeah, it can get to you a little bit. She's a good girl. The well-deserved success may mean no more rancid socks in the tour transit van, but fame was never a dream of Louise's. Wanting to be famous, that wasn't a thing that I desperately sort of craved at all. Like, it used to really annoy me when I was a kid watching famous people on TV and they'd be on whatever interview program it was and they'd say, God, it's really hard being famous, what a terrible thing. And you'd be going, bollocks. It's just like, you know, how bad can it be? You know, I think it's, it's just as hard to be, to be anonymous. <laughs> Perhaps the biggest upside of the fame game is the fact that her mum, who worried about her for years on the doll, is delighted with her success. I was, you know, hearing the records. She gets really nervous when on, t on TV, so she sits there and gets like, oh, no. It's great.